Hi everyone, welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday at Glamaz. Thank you so much for watching that commercial at the beginning of this video. Today, we are going to be making Glamaz bow tie hat. But first, let me tell you what you'll be needing. Yarn, an eye hook, a pair of scissors, stitch marker, and a tapestry needle. Today's nail polish color is a very dark, dark blue. And it's made by Hard Candy. And the name of it is Mr. Right. <laughs> Okay, now let's get started with a magic ring. And that loop that I just pulled up is going to be the first of the three chains that I make for the height of our double crochets that we'll be making here in a minute. Okay, so now we are going to put 12 double crochets into the ring besides the chain. Okay, so we're going to continue this way, putting double crochets in all the way to the end. Okay, so we're close to the end. Here's my last double crochet. Now let's see if I have the right amount. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Okay, and now we are going to close up that ring by pulling on the tail. And once you do that, you can go ahead and get your tapestry needle and weave in that tail so that it doesn't keep opening up on you. Okay, now we are going to close the ring with a slip stitch. That chain right there that we made at first, we're going to skip it. And we're going to go into the very first double crochet that we made and slip stitch into that. Now we're going to chain up three for the height of our double crochet. And we're going to make this an increase row, and we're going to put two double crochets into that same space where we just made the chain. Here's my second one. And now we're going to put two into every stitch afterwards until we get to the end. Okay, so we've got two into each, and let's do that till the end. Okay, so I'm almost at the end of the row, and now that chain three, we're going to skip and go into the first double crochet that we made with a slip stitch. And we're going to chain three for the height of our double crochets. And we're basically going to repeat that previous row. We're going to put two double crochets into that same space where we just chained three making this an increase row again. And let's put our stitch marker back into the space where we um, put our first double crochet. And now we're going to put two double crochets into the next stitch. We're going to do that all the way around. So here I am close to the end, and now that chain three, we're going to ignore and go into the first double crochet that we made, and we're going to slip stitch into that, and we're going to chain three again. And this is still an increase row, so we're going to put two double crochets into that same space 
that we just chain three. This time we're going to do something a little differently though. But first, let's put our stitch marker back into that first double crochet that we made. And now I'll show you what we're going to do differently. So we've got two there. But now, we're just going to put one. And one into that one. Now we're going to put two. Okay, so we're going to follow that two, one, one, two, all the way around. You know, I don't know how much sweeter and thoughtful my husband can be. He went to the store to get some food, and he came back and bought me and my daughter matching eyeshadow palettes. How cute is that? Okay, so here we are nearing the end, and we're going to make our last double crochet of the row. And that will help us keep our stitch sequence going of two, one, one, two. Okay, by making that one and that one double crochet or that one chain three, that's our one, one of the row. And now we're going to slip stitch into that first double crochet, chain three. And this is the end of our increase row. And look at how it's looking. And you know, by doing, by skipping that chain three and slip stitching into the first double crochet of the rows, you're not even able to see where we're making the seams hardly. Okay, so let's make our first double crochet into the same space where we made the chain three. And now let's put one double crochet into each of the following stitches. Let's put our stitch marker right back into that very first double crochet that we made. Okay, one double crochet into each of the next stitches. We'll do this all the way around. Okay, so this is our last double crochet of row 10. And once again, we're going to ignore that chain 3 and make it a filler and slip stitch into the first double crochet of the row. And now we're going to chain 3. Okay, and now we're going to do something a little differently. We're going to do front post, back post, but we're not going to use the posts. We're going to go right underneath the Vs, and we're going to push those stitches forward. There's my front post, or my front stitch. And now we're going to push the next one to the back. See how we're going under the Vs instead of grabbing the post? Just push that one back. And now we're going to do a front one. But you see, that one appears to look like it's in the back. That appears to look in the front. That one in the back. Now we're going to do the next one and push it forward. And so on. Push this one back. Okay, so we're going to continue this all the way around. Okay, so here I am at the end of my front post, back post row, and I'm ending it with a front post, and that's going to make the stitch sequence match. Here's my front, back, front, and that chain three is acting as my back. And now I'm going to slip stitch into the double crochet, and now I'm going to chain three, and we're going to repeat that row of front post, back post, but this time we truly are going to be going underneath the posts. Not the stitches, but the posts. And continue on with our double crochets. 
and this will be a lot easier to know which is front and which is back because you can clearly see that that's pushed to the back it's kind of hard to see so make sure you don't forget one of those back post stitches and you can clearly see the front post so that's an easy one and now the back push it to the back and do your double crochet okay back front back front back and all the way around we're going to do this for one two three four five five rows okay okay so here we are at the end of the row and I'm ending with a front post and now I'm going to skip that chain three like we have been doing and go into the double crochet with a slip stitch and I'm going to chain one and we have one two three four five of the uh, brim and now we are going to make single crochets all the way around okay so like I said continue to do single crochets all the way around okay so this is my last single crochet and now I am going to slip stitch into the very first single crochet that I made and now I'll grab a pair of scissors and leave myself a little bit of a tail so that I can weave that in later pull that through snug that down and like I said we can weave that in there later and now on to the bow To get the bow started, let's make a slip knot like this. And now we're going to make chains. Depending on how big you want your bow, you can make as many chains as you want. I believe I made mine 51 chains long. Okay, so here I have my 51 chains now. And now I'm going to make single crochets starting from the second chain from the hook. And I'm going to do this all the way down, back and forth, until I have 14 rows. Okay, so here we go. I have 14 rows 2 4 6 8 10 12 14 and I put a stitch marker right here in the middle so you can fold your little bow in half to find the center and put your stitch marker there and then at the end leave yourself a really long tail okay because we're going to use that to sew in the flaps for the bow so go ahead and cut yourself a tail but leave it really long okay now let's go ahead and pull that tail through and snug that down and see we're going to fold it in half like this and with that long tail we're going to stitch the folds down or tack them down let's thread our yarn with our needle or should I say let's thread our needle with our yarn <laughs> and now let's get started tacking down this flap of our bow like this
So as you can see, we're doing the other side too. And now we're going to tug on the tail to squish it in the middle to get that nice bow look. Tighten it as much as you need to. And we won't be needing that anymore. Okay, and now with that long tail, once we have it squished as much as we want, we're going to wrap that around so that we can hold on to that tightness that we just made. And I'm going to tie that long tail with the first tail when we first started making our bow. I'm going to tie those together, make a little knot, thread my needle, and weave both of those little tails in. I'll snip that down close. And there we have our bow. We could even just leave it like that and sew it onto our hat. See, because that doesn't look too bad. Or we can continue on and make a little band to go around the bow. And to do so, we're going to make a slip knot and make some chains long enough for the chain to go around your bow. I'm not sure how many I made. I either made 10 or 14, I don't quite remember. But go ahead and measure it around your bow. And I think I might need one more chain. Okay, and now we are going to single crochet starting from the second chain from our hook. And continue that way all the way down to the end, back and forth. So I made mine for two, four, six rows. And then I wrapped it around my bow and made whip stitches all around, sewing it on. And with that long tail, I sewed the bow onto the hat and uh, just go just put the bow where you want it, go up and down, back and forth onto the hat until it's on nice and tight and secure, and that's it. So that's the end of Glamaw's bow tie hat tutorial. I always appreciate you crocheting along with me. And don't forget, I always have super easy crochet tutorials here at Made with Love by Glamaw, where everything here is always made and taught by me with love.